2320 computing 2 and this is the fifth and final unit on the series of video tutorials on Python syntax. As with the other units the notebook that this um, is de derived from um, is available to students registered at the University of Leeds on this module uh, and you can download it from the Minerva pages. So in this unit we're going to concentrate on a little bit of Python syntax that um, is uh, particularly nice and convenient to go and use um, and just simply saves and makes your code a little saves lines of code and makes it a little bit more readable and that's list and dictionary comprehensions so list comprehensions and why are they useful so this is a term that's given to a particular bit of python syntax that you can use to create lists um, and dictionaries and it's a very compact and easy to read way. So quite often you're going to find you're writing code that you need to work through a list creating uh, another list by manipulating the elements um, of the first list um, as you go through. So to make a concrete example suppose that we had to a set of integers a list of integers and we wanted to calculate the square of those integers um, and make a list of that. So you could do that by writing something that looks a bit like the following. So we have our, our first list, our list of integers, and then we create a new list, which we're going to call squares, and then we simply have a for loop that works our way through the first list and appends to the second list the square of all the numbers in turn. And you can see that works fine and we just get a list of the squares of the integers in this case one to nine that's fine but the code to go and do that is kind of taking quite a few lines and looks a bit clunky so list comprehensions give us a, us a much easier and more compact way to do the same thing so here we do it in one line so what you have now is you have the same squares you say it's equal to then you have the square braces that makes it look like a list but then there's a one line bit of code inside those square brackets. So this is the, the list comprehension. Um, and basically what's going on is inside the square brackets, that one line bit of code is some kind of expression, then um, for a variable in something that looks like a sequence. So in this case, the expression is number times times two, in other words, the square of number. And then the bit of the for loop, the, the, the for statement is for number. So that's our variable in first list. And that's the thing that you can treat as a sequence. Um, and so what happens is it evaluates the expression, um, substituting in the, the value, the variable um, each time as you go through that list. And so what you get is exactly what it looks like, the sum of the squares or the list of the squares for each of the elements that are in our, our first list. But now rather than having a, a separate for loop, rather than having an empty list, rather than having to do a lot of appends, it's all happening just in one line. So list comprehensions are particularly handy um, when you're doing some manipulation of lists um, or other sequences. So for another example, here we're going to use the ORD function to calculate the numerical code that corresponds to each letter in a string and return that as a list. So again, you can see it's the same syntax. We have square brackets, we have um, an expression, in this case it's ORD X, and then for an X in, and then a string. And this works because if you remember, a string is just a sequence of characters. So the 4x in the string the lazy dog jumps over the quick fox um, will simply evaluate t and then h and then e and then space and then l and then a and then z and then y and then space and so on and calculate using the ORD function the number that goes with that. And so what you see then is the numerical codes that match to each letter in that string. So one of the really handy things you can do with a list comprehension is you can use it to go and filter a list. So um, if you ever find yourself going having to work through a list and say, well, I want to include um, all the elements that are um, match a certain condition or not include the elements that don't match a certain condition, then a list comprehension can let you do that in one line. 
So suppose here we want to go and have a list of floating point numbers and we only wanted to include uh, the numbers that were actually whole numbers. So you could code this something like this. So we have a, a list of numbers and you'll see those are all floating point numbers, some of which are whole numbers and some of which are uh, not whole numbers. Uh, and then we create another list whole numbers and we go through our first list of numbers and we test each element in that list to see whether the integer of the number is equal to the number itself. Remembering that int for a floating point number will discard the floating point part of it. It'll just keep the, the, the um, whole number part of that floating point number. So if that condition is true, then it means that um, the number we had originally must have, been an int must have been a whole number. So if that's true, we can then just append that number to our list of whole numbers and then print out the ones that are whole numbers at the end. So you see what the effect of this code is. It simply filters the list of numbers and keeps only those ones which were whole numbers. OK, but again, we're using quite a lot of lines of code in order to do what really ought to be a quite a simple task. With the list comprehension, we can write it down like this. So again, you see we've got the square brackets that tell you you're going to make a list. And then inside the square brackets, you've got the expression. So we're simply keeping number for every number in the list of numbers. And the new bit is we now have an if at the end of that. And then you see we've got the same condition we had before, if int number equals number. Um, in other words, if the number is a whole number, that condition and the if will be true. Um, if the condition um, we've got there is true, then we'll include the expression at the start of the list comprehension. So in other words, we keep only those numbers which are uh, whole numbers. And you can see when we print it out, we get the same answer as we did with the longer for loop. But we've saved ourselves one, two, three uh, lines of code. So rather than having four lines of code, we've just got one line of code. Um, and it all fits in one, one, one line, and at least I think it's quite a readable syntax. So it's just a nice, a nice to have in your Python coding. Um, so again, the general expression um, uh, for list comprehension is square brackets, and then expression for some variable in some sequence if some kind of filtering expression is true. Um, so, of course, the um, expression doesn't have to have anything to do with the variable. Neither, indeed, does the filtering expression, although quite why you'd be filtering on something which wasn't to do with the variable in the sequence is a bit un unclear. Um, but it would be legal Python, even if it's probably quite useless. So we can go further than that. We can also do uh, something similar with dictionaries. So. Um, like a list comprehension, you're just simply creating a dictionary of a one line in a one, one, one line of code. So again, to demonstrate this, what we're going to do is construct a dictionary that maps the letters of the alphabet to the hexadecimal representations of their numerical codes. Um, so here's the longhand way of doing this. So we create a string of all the characters and then we create a code dictionary that's just a blank empty dictionary. And when we loop through all the characters in our, our list, or sorry, in our string, and we add to a code dictionary um, an entry, the key of which is the character, and the value of which is the hexadecimal representation of the numerical code that goes with that character. That's the hex brackets ord brackets car bet. Um, and then at the end of that, we print out our code dictionary. And you see what it here, it prints out then a list of the letters and a hexadecimal, uh, so the base 16 representation of it. As I say, it's quite an artificial example of this, but it serves just to simply demonstrate how it works. OK, and then doing the same, but with a dictionary comprehension, you see it's one line. So the format has curly braces, um, which is telling you that it's a um, going to make a dictionary. And then inside the curly braces, the expression part that we've had of the list is now a key colon value, which is the same as if you were creating a, a dictionary directly with the curly braces. 
uh, and then we have the for loop. Um, so here again you can see we're doing for ch for car in cars, um, where cars was the string a to z in uppercase and then lowercase, um, and we're simply creating the same uh, dictionary, and we can print it out and show it is indeed the same dictionary as we created the first time. So in summary, um, we've covered um, comprehensions, both list comprehensions and dictionary comprehensions, as a way of creating and filtering lists. Um, so I showed you the simple list um, expression, so for expression, um, so an expression for variable in something that can be a sequence, and then the version that does it with filtering, so expression for variable in sequence if something is true. And then there's a similar thing for dictionaries, so now it's curly braces to show it's a dictionary, it's key colon value. Um, as the expression, so key expression, colon value expression for some variable in some sequence. Um, and indeed, although I didn't show it explicitly, there is a filtering version of that which just does the same as you might expect, expect from the list. So it's curly braces, key expression, colon value expression, so key colon value for some variable in a sequence if something is true. Um, and you can of course go wild and have um, nested list comprehensions, so each of those expressions could itself be another list or dictionary expression. Um, the um, thing you're iterating over the sequence could itself be another list comprehension. Um, you can get yourself into a, a kind of very much less than clear syntax doing that, but if you just want to do it with a one line um, unnested then it works really nicely and just makes it something which is much more compact than creating extra for loops in your code.